morning and praise the Lord. We want to thank you and we want to welcome our Sunday morning service and on this Mother's Day. Uh, first of all, we want to thank you every Mother's Day that is watching over us, Lord, and we wish you a, a very blessed and happy Mother's Day. Let's look up to the Lord in the word of prayer. Father, we look up to you in this day, Lord. Today's Mother's Day, Lord. We lift up every mother before you, Lord. We thank you for blessing us with the mothers, Lord, and the responsibility that you've given unto them, Lord, to raise us, Lord, to teach us, Lord, and to bring us, Lord, in the right pathway, Lord. And we ask you this morning, Lord, that you really stretch forth your mighty right hand, Lord, that you touch them from the top of our head to the top of our feet, that you give them the wisdom, Lord, and the blessing, Lord, that, that they deserve, Lord. Now, we also want to pray for Anthony family this morning, Lord. They just lost their mother, Lord, in this day, Lord. We ask you that you comfort them, Lord. We ask you that you strengthen them, Lord. We ask you that you come alongside of them, Lord, that you put your arms around them, Lord, that you let them understand and realize, Lord, that you are with there in the sign of sorrow. And God, we ask you for your blessing upon the service, Lord. We ask you that everything that will be set down this morning will be done, Lord, and to set, Lord, to lift up the name of Jesus Christ, Lord. We ask you that you touch the heart of anyone, Lord, that is listening to us, Lord, that when the service is over, Lord, that we will be able to commit their life totally unto you, Lord. We thank you once again for all that you're going to do, Lord, and we give the glory in God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. <laughs> Age to age, 
power in the name of Jesus. Truly there is. How many believe that? How many believe that there is power in the name of Jesus? Yes, there is. All you need to do is just exercise your faith and believe in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, whatsoever you ask the Father in my name, he will grant it unto you. And that's so powerful is the name of Jesus. Once again, I want to thank you this morning for joining together with us. And I want to share with you this morning what the Lord put in my heart uh, this week. As you see, we're still going through the lockdown. We're still confronting and fighting this a virus that is still at infecting and killing people. I know if you don't notice, we had snow yesterday, and I was reading a, an article this morning, and uh, the person who wrote the article said, I guess Mother Nature forgot that we are in May, and we're not supposed to get snow in May. In May. And then he said, the world is turning upside down. And let me tell you something. If you keep track of what's going on, not just in the United States of America, but in all the world, there's something going on. There's something that is happening. And I believe in my heart that what is happening is that God is trying to speak to us. And God is trying to get us ready because something soon is going to happen. And what is going to happen is the Lord is going to come back. And the Lord is going to fix this mess. He's going to establish His kingdom. And He's going to rule on this earth in righteousness and in justice. And this world will really know what it meant to love one another, respect one another, but most of all, love God and obey Him and serve Him every day of our life. I want to speak to you this morning about a parable that the Lord spoke, and it's found in Matthew chapter 25. And He said this, I want to read to you, and then uh, I'm going to break it apart for us. It said, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins, who took their lamp and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamp and he took no oil with them. But the wise took oil with them with their vessel together with their lamp. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and they all slept. And at midnight a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all this virgin arose and trimmed their lamp. And the foolish said to the wife, Give us some oil for our lamp are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should be not enough for us and for you. But go rather to those who sell it and buy for yourself. <clears throat> and while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with them to the wedding, and the door was shut. Half the word the other virgin came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered, and he said, As surely I say to you, I don't know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day know the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. We've been talking for the past four or five weeks about the importance of being ready. Not just on Sunday morning, but every day of the week. And now Matthew chapter 4, if you remember, speaks about the sign they are going to proceed. The sign that was going to manifest on, on the earth uh, before the Lord, it will come back again. Now Ma Matthew 25 is closely connected with Matthew chapter 24. Now one thing we, we, we need to keep in mind when we read the Bible, when we read the scripture, the original manuscript it didn't have any chapter, it didn't have any verses. Chapter and verse was added at afterward. It was a complete manuscript. It was a letter that was written by each and every individual author. In fact, verse 25 began, Then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins 
who took their lamp and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now let me let me give you a little insight to you about how waiting uh, used to take place during Bible time. They're a little different than the way we celebrate our wedding. The a Jewish wedding consists of three phases. There was a young man who likes a young girl in his village or maybe in a village close to him. So the young man would go to the father and say, Dad, I like this young girl and I would like to marry her and spend the rest of my life with her. So the father will go to the house of the young girl and speak to the father younger and say, No, my son really like your daughter. And he would like to marry her and spend the rest of her life with her. So the two fathers will make arrangements. And they will agree on the dowry prize. And there the engagement was, the contract was signed. There, the young man and the young, and the young daughter, one day they would become husband and wife. When the two father agree and the and the engagement was signed, the rest the, the the family of the future groom together with their relative would come over uh, the girl family house and the betrothal stage will begin where the two young persons will exchange vows and they will commit one another to each other. The betrothal stage will last from a few weeks to up to one year. In the meantime, the young man will go out, or if he didn't have a job, he will get a job and he will start making money because it was a responsibility to provide for a dwelling place for his future wife. And when he had built a house, or most likely what would happen is he would have a room to his father's house. When he had completed all the work, he will come at an expected time and he will take the, 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 the young girl to be his wife. And they both will walk back to the groom's wife. And they will celebrate the marriage feast. Which could last from three days to half to a week. So Jesus said, then the kingdom of heaven. Jesus, Jesus said, when I'm going to come back again. When the son of man will come again to establish his kingdom. Now the kingdom that Jesus speaks about is not an earthly kingdom. It's not a political kingdom, but it's a spiritual kingdom where Jesus is the king and he's ruled upon anyone who accept him and welcome him as king and lord in his life. So Jesus said when this time will happen, when the Son of Man will come again, that time will be likened to this parable that he had just that we had just read and he has and he has spoken. Um, as we look at the story, there are five revealed characters, and there's one character that is not revealed in the story that we want to look at this morning. The first thing Jesus spoke, he spoke about ten virgin. He said that the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgin. The virgin represent the, the bridesmaid. The ten virgin was young girls. They, are, they were pure. They were not married. And they were part of the bridesmaid. It was the responsibility during this betrothal period when the bridegroom went to build a dwelling place for the future wife. It was the responsibility to remind the bride said, the bridegroom is coming up. Cheers up. One of these days, he will come again and he will take you to bring you with them so that you and him can be husband and wife. So this young girl this ten virgin were the bridesmaid. And they represent, in the story that Jesus spoke, they represent anyone who claim to be a believer. Anyone who claim 
to be a Christian, anyone who claims to be a follower of Jesus. The ten virgins represent the professing church from the time Jesus ascended to heaven until the time is gone to come back again. The next thing we notice that then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamp. Jesus told us that each and every of this ten virgins took their lamp. The lamp were used to light up the pathway. See, they didn't have street lights during this time in the Bible land. So when the bridegroom will come at, oh, will come to take the bride, the bridesmaid will go up, they will light up the lamp, the, their lamp, and they will provide lights so they can walk towards the house of the bride so that the bridegroom could take her and bring it to his own house. So the lamp were used to light up the pathway. Now speaking for me and for you, the lamp represents our testimony for Jesus Christ. See, God called us to be his children. God called us to be sons and daughters of him. And God expects you and I to shine in this dark world that we live in. In Matthew chapter 5, from verse 14 to verse 16, Jesus said this, you are the light of the world. Now listen to me. Jesus said, if you are a believer, if you are a Christian, if you listen to me, Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill can now be hidden. Nor do they light a lamp and put on the bushel, but they put on a lampstand so that the lamp can give light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they might see your good work and they might glorify your Father who is in heaven. I want you to know that Jesus said you and I are supposed to be light. We are the light of the world. We're supposed to shine so that those who don't know Jesus Christ, those who are walking in darkness, they might be able to see that Jesus came in our life, that Jesus came inside of us, and He changed us from the inside out. He made us new person. And they will be so jealous of what you and I have, and they will want the same light that Jesus is giving unto us. The problem with many Christians is a lot of times they don't shine. They don't reflect the light of Jesus. And those who are around them, they don't see the mighty power and the miracle that God can do in the life of a person. He can translate them from darkness and bring them into the light. But Jesus said, you are the light of the world. The same way the bridesmaid had lamp to provide light to the bridegroom when he will come back. To take the bride home, me and you, as long as we are on this earth, we're supposed to shine and bring light to the dark world we're living in it. And let me tell you, this is a dark world. You know how dark this world is? I just read this morning that in Cape Cod, an ice cream parlor opened up for the first time after the lockdown. You know something? The owner had to close the ice cream parlor because of how abusive the customer were. The way they were talking to his employer, the way they were cursing them, they were, the way they were calling all kind of names. And the owner said, we have forgotten how to treat one another. And he had to close the ice cream parlor because of the abuse. The people were shouting to those workers, this is a dark world, and God wants you and I to shine. The third thing we notice in the story is said that uh, the kingdom of God is likened to ten virgins. We took the lamp, and then it said they went out 
to meet the bridegroom. Now the bridegroom represents Jesus. Jesus is the bridegroom. Remember what I told you before? The after the young man and the young lady exchange their vows and they commit to one another. The future husband, the future groom will leave and he will go to prepare a place for the future wife. And that's what Jesus did. See, Jesus came on the earth. It died on the cross for you and I. He was buried. He rose again. But then he went back to the Father. And look what he said in, in, uh, in John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. John chapter 14, verse 2 and 3. My Father's house are many rooms. If they were not so, I would have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with them that you might also be where I am. Not what Jesus said. He said, I'm going away for a little bit because I have to prepare a place for you. He said, in my Father's house are many dwelling places. I'm going to prepare a place. And when the place is finished, when the place is ready, I will come again to take you so that you can be with me where I am. In Acts chapter 1 verse 11, Jesus is talking to the disciple. And as he's talking to the disciple, he's taken up to heaven. And the disciples were looking up, gazing to the sky. And as they were looking up, gazing to the sky, two men appeared to them. And the two men said this word to them, Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking into the sky? So what are you doing here? Why are you looking up in the sky? And then they said, The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you have seen him go to heaven. The same way he went up, the same way he will come back. In Revelation chapter 22 verse 20, this is the last chapter in the Bible. Jesus said this word. He said, He will testify this thing says, Yes, I'm coming soon. The last word that Jesus spoke and they are recorded in the Bible, I am coming back soon. He spoke this word all this words almost a thousand years ago. Let me tell you, we are really close to him to fulfill this promise. I'm coming back soon. Let's go back to the town virgin. Um verse two. So this ten virgin. In verse two Jesus tell now Five of them were wise, and five of them were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamp, and they took no oil with them. But the wise took oil with their vessel, together with their lamp. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumber, and they all slept. So Jesus said there five of this virgin were foolish and five were wise. Now, our worldly, they looked the same. They were wearing the same clothes. Noted all ten had lamps. They all fell asleep. Now, the question is, why distinguish the five foolish one from the five wise one. They look the same on the outside. There's a lot of people they go to church Sunday after church, the week after after weekend, look at them, they look good on the outside. 
You can't tell the difference from the rest of the people that sit in church. And they praise God, they worship God, they sing, they listen to the sermon, they go home, they do their own thing. On the our world, they all, they, we all look the same. Now, what made the difference? What distinguishes ten virgins that Jesus said five were foolish and five were wise? You know, the difference was their, the wise one took oil with them. They heard the lamp. But they knew that if you want to light up the lamp, you need oil. Because without the oil, it cannot light up the lamp. So they made sure that they had enough oil that then when bridegroom will come back, they will be able to light up the lamp and go out to meet him. The foolish one instead, they took the lamp, but they didn't take any oil. They didn't take any oil. In their mind said, Ah, uh, maybe another day, not right now. Now, the oil in the Bible represent the presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of a Christian. Throughout the scripture, oil is always connected with the Holy Spirit, with the presence of and power of the Holy Spirit in the life of a believer. See, in, uh, in Roman uh, chapter 8, verse 9, we read this word. No one can be a true Christian. Now, Romans chapter 8, verse 9 said this. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, is he is not his. I want you to know what Paul wrote. If anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, it does not belong to him. See, the reason you are a believer, the reason is I, I am a believer, is not because I belong to a certain denomination, it's not because I'm smart, I'm intelligent. It's not because I'm self-righteous. But the reason that I am a child of God is because there was a time in my life when I asked Jesus to come into my heart. And when I asked Jesus to come into my heart, at that present moment, the Holy Spirit came and took residence inside of me. It was the Holy Spirit takes residence inside of me who made me a child of God. Not religion. No. But the presence of the Holy Spirit inside of my heart. Jesus called this being born again. That's what happened when you are born again. You can read that in John chapter 3. Jesus said, Whatsoever is born of the flesh is flesh, but whatever is born of the Spirit is spirit. See, we were dead in our sin and trespass, but when we acknowledge our sin and we ask Jesus to come into our heart, the Spirit of the living God came and took residence inside of us and He gave us life. And it's the Spirit of God who make us children of the living God. That's why Paul in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 18 says, Do not be drunk with wine, which leads to debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit. We are called to be filled with the Spirit. We are called to walk in the Spirit so we will not be able to fulfill the last of the flesh. See, the problem with the foolish virgin and the wise virgin was the one got oil. The other one did not make, get any oil. That's the only thing that made five foolish and five wise. They all look the same on the outside. Our world, they all look the same. They all tend a lamb. They all know the all tend that fell asleep. But the difference was the wise one had oil. The foolish one did not have any oil. Did not have the living presence of the Spirit of God manifest through their action in their life. Now let's go back to our story in verse 6. 
And at midnight, at midnight, remember what Jesus said? Let me, at midnight, a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go how to meet him. At midnight, the young man, the bridegroom, decided that it was time for him to go and to take his bride. Now Jesus said the same thing. That when he's going to come back, he's going to come back as a thief in the night. He's going to come back at, at, at an unexpected time. He said no one knows the day, no one, no one knows the hour. It's going to come when people do not expect him to come back. So at midnight, he said a, a cry was heard. The bridegroom is coming. So you know what, what, what would happen in this cases? When the bridegroom would leave his house to go to the bride house, someone would go before him and he will announce loudly, the bridegroom is coming to warn the people the, the, the waiting, the reception was about to take place and the bridegroom was on the way. And that's what happening at midnight. A cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom is coming. You know, that's the same thing that's going to happen when Jesus is going to come again. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, we read this word. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16. For the Lord himself, not someone else, Jesus himself, for the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. When Jesus is going to come again, his return is going to be announced with the voice of the archangel, with the trumpet of God. The trumpet is going to sound in heaven. The archangel is going to be shouting. And... The Lord himself will come again. At midnight, a cry was heard. The bridegroom is coming. The bridegroom is coming. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. The bridegroom is coming. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 25, verse 7. Then all, the te then all those virgins arose. And trim their lamp. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamp are going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and for you, but go rather to those who sell it and buy it for yourself. When the cry was heard, the bridegroom was coming, all the ten virgins woke up. They took the lamp. They trim it. They dip into the oil. And they light up the lamp. Now the foolish one realized, what a minute, we're missing oil. Our lamp are going out. So the foolish one said to the, to the wise one, hey, give us some of your oil. Because our lamps are going out. We cannot go out to meet the bridegroom because our lamps are not lighting up. So the wise went, no way, because if we give it to you, then there will be not enough for us and for you. Go to the store. Go out and buy it. And then come and join together with us. Let me ask you a question. Did the foolish virgin knew that the bridegroom was coming? The answer is, yes. They knew the bridegroom was coming. Do you and I know that Jesus is coming back? Yes, we know. How do we know? Because the scripture tells us. So you don't hear, you don't hear preach about Jesus coming back again in the, world, in the days we're living today because people are not interested in this stuff. People are all interested to, to you to tell them what they want to hear, what, what makes them feel good. But Jesus coming back again. It's called the, the blessed hope of the church. It's called 
something that we are looking for. See, the, the foolish virgin knew that the bridegroom was coming. Now, the other question is, if they knew the bridegroom was coming, why? Why did he not go out and buy oil? Why did they not make sure that they had enough oil for the time when the bridegroom would come? You know why? For the same reason a lot of Christians today are not ready for the coming of Jesus, procrastination. There's a lot of Christians in this world today they live with their life not today, tomorrow. I'm not going to give my life to the Lord fully today. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm too young. I got all my life in front of me. I want to go out and have some fun. I want to go out and enjoy myself. I, I, I got all my future in front of me. I, I'm going to get married and every kid. I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to make a name for myself. they always procrastinating. Not today, tomorrow. Tomorrow I'm going to do it. And that's what happened to this foolish virgin. They knew the bridegroom was coming, but they're in mind, we can buy all tomorrow. Not today. You know, another time, another day, another day. Another day. I want you to notice something too. The foolish one went to the wise one and said, give us some oil. Or the one that you have. You know something? Your oil. My oil. Is only for me. I cannot give my oil to my children or to my family member, my brother, my sister. No. They have to make sure that they provide their own oil. You have to provide on oil. You have to make sure that your relationship with Jesus is right. You have to make sure that every day you you get up in the morning, and every day you go to do your church or to do your business. You are walking in the fullness of the Spirit of the living God. Do not procrastinate. Do not say, tomorrow, 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 not today. The Bible said today is a day of salvation, not tomorrow. Today, we might make sure that we are right with God. Now look at verse 7. Um, look at verse 10. Before we get to verse 10, you know, if you notice in the story, the bride is not mentioned. The, bride, the, the bridesmaid, the ten virgin are mentioned, the bridesmaid, the lamp, the oil, the bridegroom, but the bride is not mentioned. And the reason the bride is not mentioned is because the bride represents the church. The true church of Jesus Christ. The bride represents the true believer. That when Jesus is going to come back, you are going to be with them. Not the nominal Christian. Not the the, the one who call themselves Christian, but they have no evidence they are truly believer by the true church. Going back to First Thessalonians chapter four, verse sixteen and seventeen. Look what remember what Jesus said? We we read the, the, the first part of the verse before that when Jesus is gonna come, there's gonna be a shout, the voice of the archangel, the trumpet of God, and then the Lord himself. And look what it says. When the Lord himself is going to come down, the dead in Christ shall rise first. I want you to know that not everyone will rise. The dead in Christ. Those who die in Christ. Those who die with a living relationship with Christ. Those who live their life under the presence and under the power and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Those are the ones who are going to rise from the grave. Not every so-called Christian, but the dead in Christ shall rise first. And then Paul said, we who are alive, every true believer that is alive, uh, when this event takes place, we are going to be caught up together with them, and we are going to meet 
the Lord in the air. See, the bride represents the true church, the true believer, those who have died in Christ and those who right now are living in Christ and for Christ. Verse 10. And why the foolish virgin went to buy the oil, the bridegroom came. And those who were already went in with them to the wedding, and the door was shut. Notice, the foolish virgin went to the store. They need to buy oil. See, the bridegroom is coming. The, 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 the shout was, was, was heard. The bridegroom was coming. So I said, let's hurry up. Let's go to the store. Let's buy some oil. And then we're going to join the, the wedding procession. So they went to buy the oil. But then in the meantime, the bridegroom came. He took the bride and went back to the father, to the bridegroom father's house. And then when they, when they got there, they shut the door. In verse 11, afterward, the other virgin came, also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and he said, I surely I say to you, I do not know you. What a sad, what a tragedy. What a tragedy. The foolish virgin knew that the bridegroom was coming. They had planned a warning. They had planned plenty of time to go and to buy oil and to make sure that they have enough provision of oil when the bridegroom will come again. But then he came. And by the time we went to buy oil and they got to the, to the reception, the door was shut. And they knocked. Then the Lord opened the door. But the, the bridegroom, the master said, I don't know you. Notice, I don't know you. See, they were nominal Christian. They were Christian by name. But they have, they have no relationship with them. And Jesus said, I don't know you. I'm sorry. The door has been shut. You cannot. You cannot come in. They missed the opportunity. They missed the chance to go to be with the Lord. You know, it's coming. There is coming a day when every believer we are going to be invited. Already the invitation went out, but it's coming a day when we all gonna have a wedding reception with our Lord. And it's found in Revelation chapter 19, begin with verse 6. Look what it said. John said, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing water, and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reign. This is towards the end of the book of Revelation. John heard a loud voice that said, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reign. And then he said, Let us rejoice and be glad and give Him glory. Now listen to this. For the waiting of the Lamb has come and His bride has made herself ready. The angel said, The day, the waiting of the Lamb has come. Today, the waiting of the Lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous act of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are inviting to the waiting supper of the Lamb. This are the true word of God. Blessed are the one who are invited to the waiting supper of the Lamb. Do you know that God is inviting you this morning? Huh? Do you know that God is inviting you and I to the to this supper of the Lamb? The invitation went now. It's up to you to accept it. And that is up to you to make sure that you are ready for when the bridegroom is going to come. To take it with them. Remember, 
you have gained the invitation, now it's up to you to accept it. And the way you do, the way you accept it is by opening your heart and receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior by being filled by the Holy Spirit, by walking in the Spirit. Now, going back to our story, in verse 13, Jesus said, Watch, therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. See, this is a parable. And Jesus was a master of parable. He used parable throughout his ministry. Parable is a short story taken from everyday life with a central spiritual truth. There's one truth. And the truth that Jesus is trying to emphasize in this story about the five virgin, the, the five foolish virgin and the five wise one is there. We must watch. We must be on the alert. We must be ready all the time. And the reason that we must watch, the reason we must be ready is because we don't know. We don't know when the bridegroom, when Jesus is coming again. He said, I'm coming again. But we don't know the day. We don't know the hour. So we are called to watch. We are called not to procrastinate it. We are called not to think we could do it tomorrow. But to right now, to open our heart and to receive Him and to look up. Let me tell you, the days we're living in, we should be ready all the time. We should be ready all the time. There's no prophecy that must be fulfilled for Jesus to come back and for the dead in Christ to rise first and for we who are alive and remain when this event takes place to be caught up together with them and to meet the Lord in the air. You don't want to be on this earth after the rapture. You don't want to be. Maybe next week I we will talk what happened after Jesus will come again and take the bride with them. But today the Lord wants you to understand one thing. You must be ready. I must be ready. And the reason is because we don't know the day. We don't know the hour. The signs are all around us. You know, just yesterday, there was 139 earthquakes. Just yesterday, there was 139 earthquakes in many different parts of this world. You know, you know the amazing thing? They asked 71% of people who claim to be Christian, they asked them a simple question, what is the purpose of life? Think for a minute. What is the purpose of life? You, 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 you claim to be a Christian. What is the purpose for your life? Why are you, why are you on this earth? Why were you born? They ask 71% of people who claim to be Christian. What is the purpose of life? You know, many of them said the purpose of life is, the purpose of my life is to be happy. The purpose of my life is to make a name for myself. To enjoy life. Less the one out of five. Think of it. To only 13%, less the one out of five said, My purpose, the reason I am on this earth, is to know God, to follow Him, and to obey Him. That's the purpose of every human being. The reason we are on this earth, the reason God allowed to be on this earth is that we might know Him, that we might serve Him, that we might obey Him, and one day to, to receive the reward that He has in store for each and every one of us. God's got something special, something beautiful waiting for you and I, but we must 
watch. We must be ready always. We must lay aside everything and every weight and every sin that so easily beset us. And we must run the race with endurance, waiting and looking for the coming of the bridegroom. Father, thank you. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for this parable, this story. God, I pray that each and every person, including me, Lord, that heard this sermon this morning, we will be wise. We will learn from the wise virgin. They knew the bridegroom was coming, and they made sure that they had enough oil, that when he will come, they will be able to go and to meet him. Lord, help us to live our life for your glory and for your honor. Help us to shine in the dark world and help us to be ready. Now, if you listen to me this morning and you're not ready, you've been procrastinating, right where you're standing, right where you are, open your heart and ask Jesus to come in and to be your Lord and Savior. That's all it takes. The Bible said, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God will raise from the dead, you are saved. That's how simple it is. You don't have to change anything. All you need to do is open your heart and receive Him. As many as receive Him to them, John said, He gave the power to become children of God. Let's say as you open your heart and as you receive Jesus, He will make you a child of God. May the Lord bless you. Amen.
God, I thank you so much for this day, Lord, and I thank you for the reminders that you've given us through this message, Lord. I ask that you help us to always be prepared, Lord, and help us to reflect on our lives and make sure that we're truly seeking you first with all our hearts, our souls, and our minds, Lord. Help us to really live like a light that shines for others to see you, Lord. I ask that you help us to always put you first in our lives over everything else, Lord, even over our own, our own life, Lord, because we know that even if we lose our life, we have an eternity to spend with you, Lord. I ask that you touch everyone who's watching. Lord, if somebody does not truly know you as their Lord and Savior, I ask that you touch their hearts and help them to really seek you and give their lives to you, Lord, because we don't have anything to lose, Lord. We have everything to gain when we seek you and put you first in our lives, Lord. I ask that you touch all the mothers, Lord. I thank you for all of them, and not just mothers, even women who are mother figures in other people's lives, Lord, and I ask that you put a special blessing on them, Lord. I ask that you watch over us this week. Just help us to always think about you and love you the way that we should. Help us to always put you first. And Lord, I thank you for everything, everything that you've done for us, everything you're doing, and everything you're about to do. We love you in Jesus' name.